Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to this video series on Logic's Master Assistant Explained. My name is Larry Holcomb aka Get to Know and I'm really happy to be delivering this video series for you with Groove 3. So Mastering Assistant is a really 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 exciting new addition to Logic's effects processors and it's there to kind of offer a similar service to things like Isotype Ozone which is up to version 11. Where it slightly differs to Ozone 11 is that I would say it's much more geared towards maybe bedroom producers, home producers who want to get really, really good mastering results for their demo tracks. As there's not as much flexibility to kind of fine tune the mastering results as you'd get with Ozone. But sometimes that's exactly what you want. You want to have a really quick and intuitive way of getting really fantastic results. And that's exactly what Master Assistant will do. So what it's going to do is going to fine tune the sound of your mix down. It's going to adjust the dynamics. It's going to kind of make corrections to the frequency balance. You can also add kind of excitation, saturation and stereo spread as well. And really all these things together in conjunction are going to hopefully lead to a result of a track which is going to sound more balanced and have a better kind of translatability across different listening systems, which is what we want from mastering a lot of the time. We want track to sound great in its kind of primary listening environment. For example, if it was a track geared towards a club, you want it to sound great in a club, of course, but also you want mixes to translate across lots of different listening systems. And really having a nice balanced frequency spectrum and the correct kind of dynamic range is going to be a massive part of making sure that mixes sound great wherever they're played. Also importantly, it's going to make sure that your tracks have got the required loudness for, for example, streaming platforms or the final medium where the track is going to be consumed. Now in this first video, we're going to talk about the workflow that's recommended for Mastering Assistant and we're going to go through the interface as well. Now in this video, we're going to be using the example of a track by this Australian rapper called Scopes and the track's called Seasons. Now if you like this track, make sure you head over to this link here. So it's Nightfall Worldwide dot lnk dot to forward slash seasons so just copy it from here and you'll see you can access this track on all these different listening platforms so there he is scopes tracks called seasons really nice kind of hip-hop track okay so the recommended workflow would be the same for any kind of marshalling processes get your mix down as good as you can possibly get it make sure you have available headroom you can see we've got available headroom here it's not maxed out you want to make sure the track is as balanced as possible and has a reasonably consistent dynamic range. Now that's going to depend on the type of music. Obviously, something like classical music has a huge dynamic range, has very loud and potentially very soft sections as well. Whereas something like this, which is a hip hop track, is going to have comparatively less dynamic range. But if we saw, you know, major, major jumps in dynamic range, that might be a little bit of a warning sign that the mix is not ready to be mastered. So let's have a listen to this track as it stands. Tell him, tell him, hey, yeah, 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 Remember getting lost in the music for no reason Riding through the city, just listening to the breeze Telling homies stories they couldn't even believe me. Just talking, like what is life even? Roll the dice, I'm just hoping I can strike even Triple sevens, now I'm on my flight leave Yeah, I'm chilling, celebrating with the crew Know I'm getting hated, but it's only by a few And I don't even mind, cause they stacking up Take a bit further in do what they so you know what's been on my mind to leave this Either insane or a genius, genius We gon', we gon', we gon' be alright, yeah, yeah And we gon', we gon', we gon' see it through the night And we don't, we don't, we don't see it black and white, nah Got it. So you get the picture, really nice hip-hop track So within the project here you can see we have this mastering tab which has appeared and that's new in logic 10.8 since the mastering assistant has been added and this is one way we can add mastering assistant another way we can add it is to go to the mix and choose mastering assistant from here i'm just going to click on here and what it's actually going to do once we load mastering assistant it's going to trigger mastering assistant analysis you can see here it's analyzing the track and now it's creating the mastering chain. Now this is all happening kind of under the hood of the plugin, so we don't have to worry about that. And now you see it's adjusted the parameters to get the best results it thinks it can get. 
Now, something I should say here is that there's different ways we can approach this in terms of what it's going to actually analyze or what it's going to use for the analysis. Now, so far, what I did was I chose the whole track for analysis. I didn't set a cycle range, but what I could do is set a cycle range here and it would actually analyze just that range there. So we could reanalyze section, for example. Now it's going to analyze this section here. Now, this is going to really depend on the track. If you had a kind of tech house track, which was very linear and the same all the way through, you could analyze the whole track. But sometimes if there's very different sections musically, you know, big breakdowns and not much going on and then, you know, very busy sections, it might be an idea to analyze a section which is indicative of how you want the whole mix of sound generally. You could even separate out different sections onto different tracks and use different mastering assistant chains for different sections. Obviously, that might jeopardize the coherence of the sound of the track. Generally, for me, I actually tend to analyze a section of the track, like the loudest, busiest section, and work back from there. So that's what we've done there. We analyzed, and now we have that as part of our analysis. Okay, so let's have a look at what mastering assistants come up with for this track. We had it for some better days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can bypass from here to here. Yeah. At the moment, we're going to get very easily tricked by a volume difference because you can see, we can hear that the loudness is jumping up. That is, unless we have loudness compensation switched on. And now we're really just analyzing with our ears the tonal difference between the mastered version and the unmastered version. Yeah, you know that we had it for some better days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was holding all that shame in. I've been letting all the pain go out. I don't even put a blame on them now. I don't even put a blame on them now. On the fine line, don't know where to lead this. We are knowing that we need this, need this. Yeah, you know that we had it for some better days. Yeah. So I'd say more open, more punchy, more of those kind of high mids coming through. It's got a louder sound with the mastering processing brought in, even though there's no comparative change in loudness because we've got more of those loud frequencies. So that kind of like this area, basically, yeah, around kind of 1K up to kind of 5K. You know, really, this is an area that our ear uses to get loudness. You know, this is our baby crying kind of zone here. It's an area our ears are very, very sensitive. So we've got more of that. There's some of this kind of muddiness here, which is now yeah, you know been removed. So this area here seen, has been attenuated to try and bring out a little bit more of this area here. Just that kind of seesaw where this is going down and this is going up. Now, there are things we can do and tweaks we can make, which we're going to look at later. But let's just have a look at, you know, a basic overview of the interface once we have the track analyzed. So starting at the top here, we have the character menu here. Now, this is where we can set a character, so the type of processing we want to have. So it's going to change the sonic qualities of Master Assistant to suit the music that we're going to be working with. Now, we're going to try this out with a few tracks, and we'll try out some of these different characters. So we'll look at that in more detail later. Now, beneath this, we have the Auto EQ slider here. Now, this corresponds to the spectral display here. So at 100%, it's applying the kind of EQ curve that's automatically been generated by Master Assistant, but then we can go positively or negatively. So at zero, we've got no EQ applied. 100%, we've got all of the EQ application that Master Assistant thinks is necessary to bring the sound out. And obviously, as we go greater than that, we're going to be pushing that out further. Now, beneath this, we have a custom EQ. So we can switch this on and off. Now, you'll see that when it's off, these three little dots disappear. Now, this is a very, very broad stroke EQ. Now, this is trying to reflect the fact that mastering should generally be a broad stroke kind of approach when it comes to EQ. Now, you can see here there's actually some pretty unbroad strokes here, but this is kind of an automatic kind of AI EQ, which is really, you know, working dynamically on the frequency spectrum to try and make the track as balanced as possible. So, really, we're just going for some kind of broader stroke changes customized to the type of result that you want. That you can switch on using custom EQ. So if you want a little bit more low end, you can use a slow shelf, a little bit less. You've got a little bell in the middle that you can move around and a high shelf to boost or attenuate here as well. And you can see that as we click on these, we get this display here telling us what the frequency is and how much gain we're applying. Okay, then we have a dynamic section over here. This is where we can add saturation using the excite button and dictate the loudness as well. And we can visualize in terms of the meters, our loudness, and we've got an LU range we're going to look at later as well. 
And then beneath this, we have a spread control, which allows us to manipulate the stereo spread of the track. Correlation meter located here as well. Reanalyze, we kind of know about because we've already tried that. And then bypass and loudness compensation, we've looked at as well. So that allows you to bypass the processing and then very important loudness compensation, allowing us to bypass but have the loudness matched so we can actually hear the processing that's taking place. Okay, so that's going to be our first video on Mastering Assistant. So what we learn in this video is that Mastering Assistant is an automatic mastering tool. This is basically the front end of a mastering chain, which is generated when you analyze the track. So when we add an image we can do from here or from the mix menu here, we play the track. We can either play the whole track to analyze the whole track, or we can analyze a section of the track, which is often the busiest part of the track, perhaps the section track, which kind of represents the overall piece the best. So that's what I did there. So when we load it up, it analyzes. I reanalyzed because I actually set a cycle range. And then when it did that, you could see it, it created that analysis and it created then a master chain, which is under the hood of this front end, essentially. We then talked about the interface, so character up here to change the type of processing that's being added, and we're going to go through that. Auto EQ shows the EQ curve that's been created by Marshall Assistant to bring out the track, and we can boost that or bring that down. All the way down to the bottom, that's going to be no processing applied, so flat. Custom EQ allows us to add in our own broad stroke changes here to what's been generated by Master Assistant. We have frequency and gain displays here to show what we're doing here. Dynamics allows us to boost or attenuate loudness. We're going to go through all this later anyway. Saturation using the Excite button. Spread is going to manipulate the stereo width of the track. The correlation meter to allow us to see how the width changes are affecting correlation. And then we had reanalyze we know about. And then bypass, allowing us to bypass the processing. Loudness compensation matches the post and pre-processing loudness. Okay, so now we've covered that. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the character and also the auto and custom EQ. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.